Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to implement a life operating system with Notion. Today's going to be a quick one, but occasionally I'd like to do a short video that addresses one or two of the more common questions from the comments section under the videos. So today we're going to look at what is by far the most common question I get, and that is how do you handle reoccurring tasks in Notion? And then at the end, I'm going to do a quick update. There's been a feature update in Notion that solves a problem we ran into in a few of our previous videos, the project database video and the goals database video. There's a little bit of an improvement that helps us eliminate a step that we had to do after implementing templates, a self-referential filtering. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because it takes one big manual step out of implementing new projects and implementing new goal outcomes. We'll get to that at the end. But first I wanted to solve the big ongoing problem of how to handle reoccurring tasks in Notion because Notion does not have this feature built in. Sooner or later, if you're running your projects and tasks in Notion, you need a task that happens on a certain day every week, on a certain date every month, every six months, whatever, you can't just have it automatically repop up. Well, we are actually in luck, those of us here using this pillar pipelines and vault system that I've been presenting, because we use due dates, DO dates. For those of you new, just very quickly, a due date is a DO date, not a DUE date. A DUE date is a date that absolutely has to be done by, there's a consequence if you don't finish it. We have those too, but we don't use those on most tasks. However, on every active task, we have a DO date. That due date is the date you intend to do the action item or the task. And that makes it much easier to deal with reoccurring tasks than the systems that don't have due dates, DO dates, which is just about every single other system out there. I think it's kind of insane, the complex formulas and backflips and really convoluted workarounds to implement reoccurring tasks. When in our system, it's quite easy and quite simple. So let's dive in. I'll show you how I do it in Notion. Okay, so starting in our command center, and you'll notice right off the bat, I have a lot of new icons implemented, a largely new icon set for the majority of my pages. So that's kind of fun. But diving straight into our action zone, which is where we interface with the task database, which I call the action item database. Most of the interfacing with that happens either in the action zone or in the project view when we're evaluating the tasks or action items for each project. On a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis, I'm in the action zone, getting things done, making things happen. Our typical layout, where we've got the action items, the priority, a done checkbox, the status is active, these are all active tasks, and the due date, the DO date, the date I intend to do it. So this is the view for today. So these are the items I intend to do today. Down here we have the calendar, which lays out the entire due date. And it shows every day for the next week, and in some cases, second week, when there's some items that are clearly need to be scheduled. But for the most part, I'm managing the due dates, the DO dates for the upcoming week. It's basically an outline of my week, and which days I plan to do which things. And it lets me make sure I don't have too much planned for one day. So, but what do you do when you have a reoccurring task? Because Notion doesn't have that functionality built in. Well, it's really simple, because we're clearly saying what we're intending to do on each day. So there are two ways to do it. First, I'm I'm going to show you what I do most of the time, and then I'm going to show a second method that's better in a few instances. So let's create a new task. Say we need to create our TPS report every Thursday. So let's set the due date for this coming Thursday. If you need to set it at a specific time, we could set it scheduled and then give it a specific time by activating the include time. And then you're doing it at 1 p.m. every Thursday. And it's always active because this is lined up and locked and loaded in our system to execute. If we're not setting a specific time, we don't set scheduled. We could either make it the first thing we do in the morning, immediate. We could set it as a reminder or we could set it as a priority. So depending what the task is, you set its priority level. So I'll say reminder. So I've set the due date for this coming Thursday and I've set remember as the status. It's that simple. You don't have to add anything other than a due date and a priority level. And even the priority level is optional until you get to the night before where you assign the next day's priorities. All right, so looking at the calendar here this Thursday we just we see the TPS report as a reminder so we come to Thursday let's say today is Thursday and we do the TPS reports now we're done so just to make it simple so we can see it the way we'll see it when we come to a Thursday I'm going to move it to today so now it's going to be in our today action view as a reminder again it could be any priority level doesn't matter so TPS report today we do it now instead of checking done after completing it we merely go to the date and set the new date for the Thursday after Boom, reoccurring task. Every time you do a reoccurring task that's weekly, instead of checking the done checkbox, you instead just change the due date to the next period in the cycle. If it's monthly, 
you do the same thing. You bump it down the next month. You click the little calendar here. It has the whole calendar. You can choose it, hit the next month, pick the date you want the next iteration of the cycle to happen and over and over. That is super simple. You'll never forget anything that way. And that's super easy all because we have due dates, DO dates. Now, this method works really well when it's a simple task, it doesn't take too long, you don't have to schedule around it. If you have a task that takes hours or half a day or it takes a large amount of time and you have to see it coming on the calendar in order to know how much time you have for other events on that day. So let's say you have to do a TPS report every third Friday of the month. So once a month, you have to spend three to four hours doing the TPS report. Well, just kicking it down every month might work, but if you're planning some things out like meetings or other significant projects, and you can't tell that on that third Friday coming up a month out, you're gonna have the significant responsibility in the way of doing other things, then you go to the alternate approach. Go to the calendar view, or you can go to the master database. You click new, say TPS report for the new task. You say it's a high priority. Say it's the first thing you have to do in the morning. Set it as immediate. Due date, third Friday of the month. It's set. Now that is ready to go. So the first month you're not gonna miss it. We look in the third Friday of the month and we have TPS report as immediate. All right, we're just gonna set them for the next six months or for the next year, and they're always gonna be there. It takes so little time to do that. All you do is right click it, duplicate it. Now you got two of them. Take the copy, remove the copy text up there, pick the next month, one, two, three Fridays, done, scheduled. Now pick the next one, duplicate, delete the text in front, go to the next month, third Friday, one, two, three. So I can schedule the entire year in less than a minute, the whole year scheduled. Now when you look out to future months, it's gonna be there. You'll know not to schedule meetings in the first half of the day if your first item each day is a three or four hour TPS report taken care of. This is so simple. This is not high tech. It's not fancy, but it works. It takes very, very little time and you get the full functionality of a reoccurring task. And it's all possible because our system relies heavily on due dates. Due dates make life easier. First, when people first hear about due dates, they get scared. They're like, oh, that's going to be so difficult. It's not. You're planning out the next week and you're just making an outline of your intention of when you expect to do things each week. It saves you from massively overscheduling, which is what we do when we don't know what's actually coming up on any given day. And it lets us schedule out reminders far in advance. It lets us schedule out reoccurring tasks. It gives us control of our life and our schedule. So due dates, DO dates, that's how you get things done. And that's how you do reoccurring tasks. Now, the second new thing I wanted to touch on quickly is that Notion came out with a new feature. A few videos ago, we did the projects database video and the goal outcomes database video. So when we go to the alignment zone, which is where I access projects and goal outcomes and projects, I've added this gallery view, which I think is kind of nice. Most of the time, I just want to get into a project. So I don't need the entire table view. The table view, which I call the action implementation view, is very useful when I'm doing work on the group of projects together. But sometimes I just need a quick access and this gives me a glance of the progress level and lets me get into it very quickly. So we jump into one of these and we see what I showed you in the project's video, which is we have these self-referencing databases. The pillars database is filtering to itself. Projects contain find higher video editor. That's the project we're in, find higher video editor. Same thing here, we're filtering by itself. Same thing here for tasks, we're filtering that the projects contain find higher video editor. The action items or tasks are only listed if they contain a link to this particular project, the find higher video editor. Again, that that is the one that we're in. So it's a list of tasks only for that project, which is how we organize and sort which tasks are active and which are next up and which are future. But the problem is when we create the template, this new project template, we're going to edit the template right now. The template gives us all of these tables already implemented. Previously, couldn't select the filter to self reference the project that was created. So you had to leave this blank and then after you created a project, go through and fill it out for these three database views that are filtered referencing the project that you're in, which right now is just the project template. So now we have the solution of being able to go to filter, contains, you click select a page. Again, we're just in the template. And now for the first time, we have the option to choose the template itself. The first one listed will be the template that you're in, not one of the projects which are fixed, but the template which will be relative. So when you create a new project from this template, it will reference the new project. You won't have to go in and fill it in manually. So we add new project template, which is the name of the template. So when we go to filter now, we say filter projects, the relational link to the projects database for goal outcomes is linking to 
the project template name itself. And now finally for the action items, filter by, and I've already gone and done this one, new project template. Not one of the existing projects, but the template name itself. That means when you create a new project, you hit new, create a project from template. We'll call this new test project. And you scroll down and pillars, and pillars is filtered by new test project, the new project we created. No longer the template, now it's the project itself. Filtered by new test project, and most importantly, the tasks, the action items, are filtered by new test project, which is the new project we created, no longer self-referencing the template. So the template functions much better. This is particularly important when you have teams using this create a new project template because it's hard to explain to them every time. You might remember, but it's hard to get your whole team to remember, or you might not remember, or it's going to save you time having to go through three adjustments to the filter. You create this new project and it's completely ready to go now. You have to do nothing other than start adding the action items, identify why you're doing this project, and start thinking on it. So it's that simple. So that's it, a couple of small things today, but small things add up to an efficiently operating system and a streamlined workflow so you can get more done faster, more easily. You can bring team members on more easily with lower friction and things just get done faster. So the next video after this is going to get back to our regular series, continuing our evolution of building out this comprehensive life operating system. If that's of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.